Welcome to the Myth, Legend and Lore podcast. The Vilispa is the first and possibly the most well-known poem in the Poetic Edda which is a collection of Old Norse poems that are our main source of the myths. Originally, the poems that have been recited at feasts or gatherings, where skalds would recount these tales of the gods, the heroes, and their deeds from generation to generation. The Poetic Edda, also known as the Elder Edda, was compiled by an unknown scribe in medieval Iceland in the 13th century, and from sources dating back to many centuries earlier. These mythological poems depict the worlds of the gods with striking imagery, and for me, none more so than the Velispa. This poem tells us of the creation of the world to its destruction and the final battle of the gods at Ragnarok. It rapidly propels us through the history of the gods, men, giants and dwarves. In Old Norse, Velispa translates to the prophecy of the seeress, or witch, and in this poem we hear how Odin has summoned or awoken a vulva seeress from her grave, seeking her knowledge and visions. In Norse mythology, Odin, often called the Allfather, is the god associated with war, death and the battle slain, his whole Valhalla, magic, poetry and wisdom. In his never-ending pursuit of knowledge, he sacrificed his eye and even hung himself from a branch of Yggdrasil for nine days and nights in order to learn the secrets of the runes. The seeress begins in the past about the creation of the world and how the gods made it out of the giant Ymir's body. She speaks of the world tree Yggdrasil, the war between the Aesir and the Vanir, and the origin and names of the dwarves, and the wise women called the Norns who carve men's fates and determine their destinies. The seeress then begins to tell Odin of the destruction of all things, the final battle that will see the gods face their doom at Ragnarok. As the poem concludes with the seeress revealing her vision of the rebirth of the world and the peace that it now knows, The final stanza leaves an unsettling image with the reader, which in one translation reads, There comes the dark dragon flying from beneath the glistening serpent from Nidafels. On his wings bears Nidhogg, flying o'er the plain a corpse. Now she will descend. I have copies of the Poetic Edda by Professor Caroline Larrington and Dr Jackson Crawford, and they are simply outstanding. And I'd also direct listeners to the Northern Myths podcast, as Luke and Dan are doing a phenomenal job at looking at the poems from an archetypal perspective. I really do urge listeners to read the Velispa, if you haven't already. There's a couple of reasons why I find it so fascinating, one being the creation myth, which goes a little something like this. In the beginning there was Gap, the great void, the bottomless abyss. To the north was the dark and misty realm of Niflheim, covered in ice and snow, and from its heart ran eleven rivers. South of the void was Mispelheim, molten, fiery and glowing, ruled by the giant Sirt. From fire and ice, Ymir the frost giant was born and said to be evil. As Ymir slept, his sweat created the man and a woman, and from his legs a son, and he became known as Orgelmir, the father of giants. Ymir fed on Odumla the cow, who emerged from the melting frost, and she, who fed from the salty blocks of ice, brought a man into being, whose name was Buri. Buri in time had a son called Bor, who wed Bestla, daughter of the frost giant Bolthor. They had three sons, Odin, Billy, and Fay, who were the first of the gods. The sons of Bor grew to despise the brutal nature of Ymir and his frost giants. They killed him, and from his body formed the world. Ymir's flesh became the earth, his blood the seas and rivers and lakes, and from his broken bones the mountains, rocks and stones. Then Ymir's skull rested on the four corners of the earth and became the sky. Taking sparks from the fires of Mispelheim, The gods threw them up into the sky where they became the sun, moon and the stars. The earth, Midgard, was round and lay within a vast sea. The gods then breathed life into an ash and elm tree and made the first man called Ask 
and a woman called Embla, giving them understanding, movement, hearing and sight, and hearts, and the realm of Midgard to live in. From Ask and Embla, all races of men are descended. Then the sons of Bor built their own realm and called it Asgard, a wondrous place of green plains, and stood there the halls of the gods, and the hall of the slain, Odin's Valhalla. And between Midgard and Asgard was Bifrost, the rainbow bridge. Central to all of this is the mighty ash Yggdrasil, the world tree. There are three women, the Norns, who weave and seal the fate of all beings, and dwell at the roots of Yggdrasil. Deeper than that is the well of Mimir. Upon the grass that blankets the ash, the gods gather to discuss all the nine realms. Yggdrasil soars above all of creation, with roots stretching into Asgard, Jotunheim and Niflheim. On its branches sits a hawk and an eagle. Deer leap within it and eat of Yggdrasil's leaves. A squirrel scurries about its trunk, and a dragon gnaws at its roots. It is the centre of the cosmos, the giver of life. Another reason is, of course, Ragnarok. And a quote from a much-loved book that I own reads, An axe age, a sword age, shields will be gashed, there will be a wind age and a wolf age before the world is wrecked. With every podcast, I would like to close with a story or a piece of mythology, legend or folklore. And today I would like to read a section from a short story that I think really does talk about Ragnarok rather well. And to set the scene, imagine this tale um, being told to a group of strangers, each seeking warmth from the fire and comfort from the storm that has run their ship aground on the shores of medieval Iceland and into the house of an old man. I can see by the look on your faces, you need something to warm the blood, to light a fire beneath your skin. Your hands, he nodded at the men sitting like hollowed out tree stumps, and the woman whose skin was paler than snow. Your hands have been put to work for many things. Good, good strong hands. But see how your fingers tremble? It's not fear, no. It's the cold. You will learn to live with it to embrace it as it wraps its icy cloak around your limbs. But for now, I will tell you a tale that will give your hands some other reason to shake. The time of Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods, when destruction will end all that we know and a new world will emerge. In Midgard, the age of sword, the axe and the shield will see men turning upon one another. Fathers will slay their sons. Women will desert their men. This is the time of the Fimbulvetter, the harshest and most cruel of winters, when the sun will not penetrate the storms of snow and ice. The earth will begin to shake and tremble, the sons of Loki will awaken, and side by side Fenrir and Jormungand will release their fury. Flames from the tongue of the great wolf, venom from the mouth of the serpent, together they will destroy the land and sky. Heimdall, the watchman of the gods, will sound his horn. Yggdrasil will groan and shake, but into its embrace the man and a woman shall shelter while the nine realms tremble. The Aesir and the Einherjar will make ready their armour and weapons, while Odin, the Allfather, leads them into battle against their enemies, the giants, the sons of Loki and all the damned of hell. Odin will battle with Fenrir, and his son Thor at his side will engage the monster Jormungand. Freyr will battle with the fire giant Surt, and Tyr will face Garm, the hound who guards the entrance to the underworld. Heimdall and Loki, age-old enemies, shall once more meet and destroy one another. Thor, the glorious and powerful son of the Allfather, will kill the serpent, but the venom will take his life upon the god's ninth step. Odin, who will battle still with Fenrir, will succumb to the vicious and bloody duel when Fenrir opens his jaws and takes Odin between his teeth. Into the mouth of Fenrir shall Odin be swallowed, his end met by the wolf. Another son of Odin, Vidar, the silent and avenger of the Allfather, shall step forward and break the jaws of the beast 
avenging his father and surviving the greatest of all battles. But what of the chaos and destruction can possibly survive? This, this I shall tell you. The son of Odin, the sons of Thor, the humans within Yggdrasil's embrace, and Baldr, who was taken from the gods, and Hod, who was punished for his death. They shall be there too. There will be signs of the gods who have been, in the land and sky, in the earth and the heavens. New halls shall be built, and the rulers there will know peace. But always, always there is darkness and light. There will exist beings of good and evil. It is the way of things. There will be an underworld where the vilest and the cruel shall drown within their own poison. The woman and man, named Lif and the Thrasir, will see the new dawn through the branches and leaves of Yggdrasil. They will have children, and their children will come to bear their own children. This is the way of life and beginnings. The old man sat gazing into the embers of the fire, his burning light dancing across his eyes. He blinked and shook the vision from his mind. With a sigh, he dragged a heavy hand across his face and pulled his fingers through his long grey beard. We have not yet met the end. I must bring you farther back, before my tales of Ragnarok, before the destruction and chaos, to something else that is most important. Fate touches every man. We must face it with honour so that we might join Odin and his warriors in the Hall of Valhalla. Fate cannot be changed. It cannot be ignored. It is fate who will reveal its lessons in the tales I now recite for you. Since releasing my book this year, I've had the good fortune of being introduced and meeting some wonderful people. Their enthusiasm and work is absolutely inspirational. And so I'd like to do a little shout out to the following great folks. Noah of the History of Vikings. A special thanks to you as you've been super in helping guide me through this process. Your knowledge and expertise has been invaluable. I wholeheartedly urge listeners to tune in to the History of Vikings podcast. The show is absolutely fantastic. It covers not only the history and mythology of the Vikings, but has superb guests. I was a fan, then a guest, and now a fellow podcaster. So thank you, Noah. As I mentioned earlier in the episode, please check out the phenomenal work of the Northern Myths podcast. You will not be disappointed and your mind will absolutely be blown. I had a wonderful time with Luke and Dan in an episode a few months ago, and they've just had a number of wonderful guests on their show. Leah Commando of the Viking Age podcast. Thank you, Lee, for taking time to email me, and it all started with me listening to your show. You encouraged me to reach out, and it was brilliant advice. And please keep up the amazing work in your podcast. It's just superb. Fjorn's Hall. This is an exceptional podcast looking at the history and culture of the medieval north. Fjorn also has a website, which is a brilliant resource with an incredible amount of knowledge from its host. Please check out the hashtag Gunners Gang. This podcast really does invite you into a hall brimming with tales and a horns full of mead. And to the lovely Shan Esther Powell of the Celtic Myths and Legends podcast. This is a wonderful show that takes us on a journey through the myths and legends of the Celtic nations. The mythology features fairies, elves, giants, incredible creatures and legends of the heroes. And it's brought to life with the wonderful work of Shan. I really do love it. And to Kevin, who founded the Going Viking community and gave us all a place to gather, please head over to the goingvikingcommunity.wordpress.com website for reviews, interviews, blogs, links, and much more. Also on Twitter at Going Viking. Thank you, Kevin. So those are my shout outs for this episode. And the next time I'm going to concentrate on my fellow writers. And of course, as always, thanks to my wonderful family and friends who have been more than amazing and have heard me talking about Norse mythology for a long, old time. As always, you can reach me on Twitter on at Laura Myth, um, also on Facebook, or you can email me and that is mlegendlore at gmail.com. I'm Siobhan Clark and thank you for listening to the Myth, Legend and Lore podcast. <laughs>